Hello, I um, recorded a video recently about the grape cup, so um, it was just a brief kind of synopsis of how to, how you make it. It wasn't full, it wasn't fully detailed, and there was a request to have a little more detail. So I'm making one where I show you how it's made from scratch. This is one of the ones I made um, earlier this week. It's been made but not fired, so that's why it's the colour it is. Once fired, it should be a lovely, rich kind of black. Um, chocolatey brown colour. Um, you can see on the inside the roughness that I spoke about in the, in the previous video. Uh, we don't know why but that's the way it was made. We have the corded decoration, the beads, the piercings through. So that is the grape cup, basic grape cup. To start with you have yourself a lovely ball of clay and we're going to make it into a simple pinch pot like this so this is the base this is what the grape cup is made onto so that's the base and then onto that we add all of these beads which does quite seriously change the shape of the cup once those beads have been added it really rounds it off you're starting with a ball of clay you want your ball of clay to be as round as possible as smooth as possible so we're working to get rid of any creases and then as with any pinch pot it's thumb into the center and we start working that pot when i get down as far as i need to towards the base i'm starting to pinch around the walls of the pot and i know this has a nice crisp flat bottom so I'm going to establish that very shortly so I start to use my thumb just to try and establish that now we're making this as a replica so we want it to be as close to the measurements of the original as possible so I will check the measurements regularly with my ruler and my caliper but you don't necessarily need to if that's not what you're making it for. So once I've established the base, I'm bringing the sides out and fattening it up. This pot that we're making now, it is just a rough. We, we rough out the shape um, with most of the pots that we make. They get roughed out um, initially with um, a simple, simple silhouette of what the final pot's going to look like, and then we refine the details later on. So fattening that pot out, and it comes in slightly as well, so we want to make sure it stays inwards. So the whole time you're just paying attention to the final shape that you want and tweaking it, checking and tweaking as you go along. The key really to a pinch pot is making sure that the um, that the the work you are doing is done all the way around the pot, that you don't accidentally just do half of it, which is easily done. So now I've got the basic shape of the pot, it's the, the rim here is very rounded and the grape cup has this lovely sloped inwards rim. So to do that, I'm coming around the edges, just pinching those edges inwards to establish that lovely rim. Once I've done that, this will be left. We usually leave it for about 24 hours, something like that. That doesn't necessarily mean that the original maker did that. You can speed up the process of drying it out a bit if you leave it near um, a heat source. So perhaps they maybe left it by the fire. A nice sunny day, that would also do it. Um, so you, you can speed things up. It doesn't necessarily mean just because you leave it for that length of time that they did. But you would have to leave it for... A period of time till it became 
firm enough for you to do the next stages. So that is the basic pot there. And next time we work on it, I will be smoothing off the surface because it has a fairly smooth off surface prior to putting the beads on because down here is smooth and up there is smooth. I'll be crisping up that edge and adding the beads. So that's the next sort of stage of work. So I have my blank pot now for my grape cup and I'm going to start adding the beads. Um, what I start with is to make sure that I get a nice even rim because the original did have a nice even rim I go around and I just mark a very very vague mark where I pretty much want it to the, the beads to start and then that bit will be a decorative bit of the rim that has some cording decoration on it with the original by the time the makers got to the bottom they're actually going slightly slanted so I, I don't worry too much I do try and get them even but but clearly, you know, when you're making something by hand, that sort of thing does happen. Um, so I've marked all the way around there. Um, and then I'm going to add my beads of clay. The number of beads that are on the, the cup, it's around 150. It's got six rows of them and the rows vary. Um, you've got ones that are 28, 28, and then it goes 27, 27, 26, I believe. Um, so I'm starting off with the top ring which is 28. To attach each bead, um, first I, I cut out the number of beads that I want to go on there, just it's easier to get them all cut out and the number you need sitting ready for you. Um, now I, I do often use a paintbrush to do this to add the water um, so that the two pieces of clay stick, however the thing that prehistoric people might have been using, your Bronze Age people might have been using is a feather works just as well. Um, so you're adding that to ensure that the two pieces of clay are attaching. Then you take your ball of clay. They're not absolutely round. They're slightly pointed, each of the, the balls of clay. Um, and you're attaching it. And this does take um, a, a long time. It's one of the reasons I have a sponge to help support the pot, because if you're holding it in one position, uh, it can start to give you a sore shoulder and or arm. And essentially this is it. We're going round and round and round, rolling a bead of clay. Now, ordinarily with pottery, you would often do what we call scratching and attaching. So you would hash the surface. Because these are such small pieces, it's not, um, it's not required to do too much of that. And what you don't want to do is have so much texture beneath that you have to try and get rid of that once you put your beads on and then the texture's there and you just don't really want to have to look at that. Um, it's not authentic to have all those hash marks visible. And we're going round and round and round. I'm not going to make you watch me put every single one on. I might film again as I get to the other end to show you how you make sure that you space them out nicely. So that's the beginning of the decorating of the grape cup. So I've come all the way around and I've got four more beads to go in a quite a big space. So um, I've maybe put them a little bit tight. This is perfectly normal. Um, sometimes you've put them a little tight and you've got quite a wide space. Other times you have been a bit too generous and you've not got enough space. So at this stage, what I do is I just gently start shifting some of them, these beads here on the edges to try and make sure that I'm evening it out. And now I'll add a few more and see but it, it can be a case of just shifting them around uh, but with the first one that is it's always the most difficult with this first ring because they're the one that sort of sets the the spacing for the ones that go below it so this is definitely the trickier of the layers see i thought i had too much space and now i'm gonna get the last two just in there my last one and then I'll come and start on the next layer in a moment so there we are first ring is in right so I'm on to the sec second row of um, beads these go directly underneath the first row but with these ones as you can see with this first one that I've put in the row below 
the bead is slotted in between two of the upper beads and it creates this kind of spiraling once all of the beads are in so you get this sort of spiral of beads there is um because the rows of beads are not um all even we've got 28 28 27 27 26 you do at some point have to um alter that slightly but it's not noticeable in the cup mainly you're getting the second row slotted between the second um between two of the upper ones and that's essentially it you're going around slowly and doing the same thing uh, with this i have to say a uh, finger size will play a part in how how small the beads can be, how tightly packed they can be. Obviously, people with smaller, more delicate hands might find this a bit easier. If you've got bigger hands, you might require slightly larger beads. But that's it. I'm going to go around and finish off that row. So row number three, very similar to row number two. The, uh, the beads slot in between the upper row. So exactly the same, a bit of water, and you're applying the beads. They are quite tight, you're getting six rows onto a not very big pot, so you do have to keep them fairly tight. And we don't worry too much about the bits in between um, the beads, because later on little holes are pierced through there, so there's no real need to worry too much about how neat they are, because, yeah a hole goes there so it doesn't really matter and yep carrying on round the only difference if you're doing it exactly as the original cup is the only difference with row three is we're now dropping a bead but um we gradually work um one of these spaces out as it were so Instead of putting it directly below that one, I'll bring it slightly over. So I'm beginning to push over a little bit and I keep working a little bit over until we entirely drop one of the spaces. So now I'm almost in line with that one. Those two are almost in line rather than it being right in the middle. There we are. And just working it over until, like I say, you've dropped one of them. And sometimes it takes a little bit of checking. And it does. It, it, it is a gradual process, so it is going to take some time. So at this stage now, I have dropped one of the gaps. And so now I can go around um, and I can bring this one directly below as it was meant to be. And I'll continue that round because, like I say, I've dropped one of the gaps. So now I should have, have the perfect number of gaps for the number of beads that I want to put in. So I've carried on and done rows four, five, and then I'm on six, the sixth row now. I'm just finishing that off. But you can see it's exactly the same. You're, you're slotting the bead in between and you're getting now these lovely diagonals. With um, the last little bit, so I've got four more to put in um, and it's getting a little bit tight. So what I have to do is just remove a little bit of clay to make sure that I can squeeze the last four beads in. Now, I mean, to what extent the person who made the original was worrying about the number of beads going in, that might be the reason for the the different numberings as we go down um, as we're trying to replicate it we're, we're being a bit more conscious of that but whether they were really worried about getting the, the numbers in that specific order I couldn't tell you um, and then once I've done this these last two beads um, it'll be the final decoration that'll go on around the rim using a piece of cord. The last one is usually the trickiest one to get in because you've got very little space for your fingers to actually work. There we are, it's in. Um, so the 
the beads don't come all the way down to the bottom. There is um, quite a considerable bit of space um, at the bottom there. But once it's sitting, it looks like the whole thing is completely covered with beads. And there we have it. So now it's decorating with a cord. Um, I might use a very slightly dampened finger just to get rid of anything that I'm not happy about. This The clay that we're using is quite a gritty clay because um, that is what was available at the time. N nothing too overly processed. But uh, those little pieces of grit, you just want to make sure that they are down into the body of the clay and not coming up and causing scratching. So... The decoration now on the cup here. Um, we have decoration around the rim. I believe it's four four rings of corded decoration on the inside and three on the outside. The first one um, on the outside is very close to the beads, so you've got to be very careful as you do in this. What I often do is I don't do this usually straight after I finish the beads because although these ones are pretty firm, the ones at the bottom are still very wet. So by doing it earlier like this, I've got to be very careful as I'm turning the cup, I'm not catching those beads. If you leave it for a little bit longer and let the whole thing get a bit drier, it means if you do catch one, you're less likely to distort it. So just gently pressing as you come all the way around. It is a very fine cord that has been made to decorate this cup. The outside is easier than the inside, although both of them are tricky. So that's the first one, and then I'll go and do two more above that. For the internal ones, um, for the internal ones, it, it is a bit more tricky, and it's it's the end I always find kind of gets in the way. So I tend to tuck that in, and then come round and start. I start at the bottom and then work my way up. I don't suppose it matters too much. So my right hand is holding the cord so that it's kind of curving and sitting almost where it's going to be. And then with the left hand, it's just a gentle pinch to try and push the decoration into the surface there. I do find, not that you can see me, I do find that I end up sticking my tongue out when I do that. <laughs> So it seems to help with concentration, um, whatever works for you. <laughs> um, right, so I'm going to do the other rings now um, and I'll show you when it's completely done. So that's the decoration added. At this stage I usually give a sigh of relief and think I'm done, but um, actually it needs to dry and it needs me to wait and then the holes will be pierced through using our Bronze Age pin tool, which I haven't got near me. Um, so yeah, the holes will be pierced through uh, in a bit. You can't do it too early because of the softness, particularly of these lower beads. So you've got to let the whole thing harden up so that you're not going to destroy those as you're going around and piercing your holes. So we're on to the final stage, the piercing of the holes. We use a piece of copper wire inserted into a piece of dowel so something they would easily have been able to make I'm sure obviously not with dowel but with a stick um, so that's about a three mil diameter this piece of copper wire and you're going around and you're piercing the holes now when it comes to piercing these what you're trying to do is go all the way through because most of the holes were pierced all the way through not cleanly, but they were pierced all the way through. Um, so you're trying to get the, this pin all the way through. But as you go through to the other side, once you hit the other side, obviously there's no more resistance. So you can, if you're not careful, 
push this too far in and end up knocking the ends off the beads that you've put in or knocking them flat, distorting them in some way. So the trick is to go around and do it very carefully so that you're not um, bashing the tops of the beads that you've applied. The best time to do this is when these beads are hardened sufficiently that you can touch them without damaging them. When they were first put on, if I tapped it, I would have flattened it. So I've left it to a state where it's, it's, you know, it's holding its shape, but that you don't want the, the main pot to be so dry that you can't get this through very easily. A, a, good, a good test is if you're actually punching the clay out as opposed to just piercing the holes, you're at a good consistency there because that's what you want. You want to almost punch those holes through. Now, um, in the previous video I did, I mentioned how the internal surface of the grape cup is pretty rough. It, uh, you know, the holes get pierced and then pretty much left. So you end up with a very, very rough surface on the inside. Um, and I have been asked by a number of people if we are going to clean up the internal surface for the purposes of our replicas and, and the answer has to be no and the reason the answer has to be an absolute no is we don't know for sure what the grape cup was used for and we therefore do not know for sure if the rough surface was or was not part of how it was used um, we have had people suggest uh, and i'm not sure this is true but however it, it's still important to, to register it as a as an important opinion is that some people have suggested that perhaps it's some form of early grater because it's rough on the inside you might put beads in and a bit of beads in, berries in <laughs> you might put berries in and rub them around and somehow get the juice out now I, I think that seems very impractical if it was being used as a grater if I was going to have a grater I would certainly not have it on the inside of a very tiny cup um but we don't know why the internal surface was rough and therefore we cannot start messing with the design because we then potentially um, completely alter what the cup was made for. So no, we will not and we do not um, neaten up the insides of the grape cups because, well, it just feels wrong. It's not true to what the original was like and so we won't be doing it if you wanted to make your own and you wanted to choose to to neaten up the inside that is your choice but our choice is a no so i'm keeping going round here the the holes are kind of sitting below and in between the beads above so i will continue doing them here here and again here they do not continue beyond this row so we only go here here and here and very much the same as I am doing I'll keep doing that keep emptying down out any extra bits of punched clay and there you can see hopefully the roughened surface on the inside 